Hi, everyone. Welcome to another session of the Edward Jones Chatting Cage. This time we got MLB Network analyst, good friend and colleague, Dan Plesak, also known as Plesak19 on the Twitter out there in Arizona. Dan, thanks for being with us and taking your cuts in the cage. Nice to be here. Taking some cuts at the cage. Listen, I wasn't a very good hitter, but I'm a pretty good talker nowadays. <laughs> well, that's, I, think, I think we're in a good spot then for this. Let's start with social media and fans. You know how this works. <laughs> I'm just here to help you get FaceTime with your favorite MLB personalities like Dan Plesak. So get that uh, webcam fired up and join us here on the cage. I'm going to go to Twitter first. Uh, and there's been a lot of activity. As we know, Dan is down there uh, with MLB Network, getting some great interviews, some great coverage. And this from Rock Chop Baseball. And it was a great conversation. Who is the best reliever from Gary, Indiana? Is it you, Dan, or is it Latroy Hawkins? Listen, Latroy Hawkins can beat me up right now. He's in much better shape than I am. I'd like to say me, but if Latroy or any of his family members are watching, he'll have a bounty out on me. I'm going to say Latroy Hawkins. Okay? Uh, very, I think it's me. Very well surmised and well answered there. That's how it works, folks. It's just that simple. <laughs> if you can't get to a webcam, fire up Twitter, get us a question. We'll get it to Dan for you. This is the Edward Jones Channing Cage. Get some FaceTime. Get some conversations going as we get fans involved, just like this one right here. What's your name? Where are you from? What's your question for Dan? I'm Matt. I'm from Maryland, and I'm wondering, what do you miss most about playing? Uh, Matt, what I miss most about playing is the guys. I mean, I had a first time. I put a uniform on for the first time in 12 years, Matt. The Phillies asked me to come to Clearwater and be a guest instructor, and the game moves awfully fast. And the further you get away from the game, the fish get bigger, the deer get bigger. Everything seems bigger and better. But it was a, a, a really a slap of reality to be back on the field. I had a chance to watch Cliff Lee and Cole Hamels throw bullpens up close and in person, watch a guy like Ryan Howard, Chase Hutley hit the ball. You don't realize how big, how fast, and how strong these guys are and how easy they make it look. To answer your question in the short term, I just miss being around the guys, having fun, and sharing some laughs. Uh, there you have it, folks. Thoughts from Dan Plesak on, on what he misses most about playing and now that he covers for MLB Network. And uh, you bring up some storylines. I'll go back to Twitter for this one. Uh, the Phillies are a story, obviously. I saw you talking to Tulo. Got a chance to catch with him. Mulling it under wants to know what spring storyline are you most interested in? I tell you one camp, you know, th this is my seventh camp. I'm here doing nine, 30 teams in 30 days. I'm going to cover nine of the 15 teams in Arizona. The one camp that I came away for so far, uber impressed, was the Chicago Cubs camp. Joe Madden, I think the Cubs players are buying. 2015 may be one year too soon, but I really like what they're doing. And I think getting John Lester was big. I love their starting rotation. Jason Hamill, Jake Arrieta, their bullpen, not a lot of household names. Rendon's done a great job closing games. If their young players get a lot better real soon, they could cause some problems. The problems for the Cubs, though, that division, in my opinion, top to bottom, is the best in baseball. The Pirates are a good team. If the Cincinnati Reds get Jay Bruce and Joey Votto back, they could be back in the mix. The Milwaukee Brewers were the best team in the division until the month of September. The St. Louis Cardinals are a good team. That NL Central, top to bottom, is really good. But I will say this. When the Cubs do get good, they have the money, they have the resources, they have the young players. When they get good, they're going to be good for quite a while. Uh, that's exciting to hear as the Cubs get some love here in spring training from Dan. And as we know, back to the future called it. 2015 is the year of the Cubs. So we'll see if Marty McFly knew what he was talking about uh, when that goes, uh, breaks down as the year unfolds. I think we'll cover more of that as the season goes on. We'll stay with Twitter. Uh, uh, Nonzi54 wants to know, Dan, what do you remember about your three All-Star experiences? Uh, my three All-Star games, the first one, I guess was the most nervous. I pitched in an all-star game in Oakland, came in in a tie game one-to-one -one in the ninth inning, pitched a scoreless ninth inning, but I think the highlight of my all-star games, and maybe the highlight of my career, pitched in the 88 all-star game, and then Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, faced one hitter, struck out Daryl Strawberry in the bottom of the eighth inning with a one-run lead. So I'll always remember Riverfront. It was a special time for me. And I knew going into that day, you know, I was pretty much my guy was Daryl Strawberry. If then the American League, who I was pitching for, we had the lead in the seventh, eighth, or ninth, and the straw man was coming up to bat. I was in there to go get Daryl Strawberry. And for that one night, I was pretty good. Uh, there you have it, folks. A great uh, insight into what it takes to be a big league pitcher, knowing your situation, knowing things you might have to face, and then stepping up uh, at the moment. That is Dan Plesak. I'm JB. This is the Edward Jones Chatting Cage. Fans, join us just like this fan right here. What's your name? Where are you from? What is your question for Plesak19? 
Hey, Dan, I'm Brian from Florida, and my question for you is, what is the best prank that you can remember that a teammate has played on another? Uh, Brian, there's a lot of pranks, but one of the pranks is you, you've seen the old gum with a little bit of a, they call it a fire, a shoe, you catch your shoe on fire. You take a piece of gum and you put some, you put a string or you put something that you can light it on fire, and it almost looks like a candle, and you attach it to the back of somebody's shoes. They call it a hot foot in the business. So you can usually get younger players pretty easy with the hot foot because they're always up on the railing watching the game like a kid in kindergarten. So they're not paying attention. If you're really good and you're really nimble about it, you can take that piece of gum Take a piece of string, light that on fire, and stick it on the back of his shoe. And as soon as that wick starts to get down into the gum, you'll see a guy start shaking his foot like his foot's on fire, and it's called a hot foot. It's a really, a, it's a good thing for an older guy to do to a younger guy. <laughs> Here's what I like about the cage, folks. You might learn about pitching. You might learn about swinging. But you also might learn about how to prank in the dugout. That's the key to what the chatting cage can bring. You bring the questions. Dan Plesak brings the answers. That's right. Hashed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Hashtag hot foot. <laughs> Hashtag hot foot. Uh, another fan. I can't wait to find out what this next fan's going to ask about. Fan, what's your name? Where are you from? What's your question for Dan? I'm Maya from Stanford, Connecticut, and I would like to know how did you develop your slider? Well, how did I develop my slider? Well, I would advise you this. Don't start fooling around throwing curveballs and sliders until you're about 15 or 16 years old. But when you do start developing that good curveball and slider, I think one of the keys to throwing a good slider, a good curveball, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, is to make sure that you have the, your fingers on a seam and a thumb on the seam. So when you pull down, you're pulling with your fingers and you're pulling with your thumb, and you get a really good tight rotation. That way you don't throw those ones that just kind of spin sideways. You want one that spins 12 to 6 up and down. I told you, folks, we've got hot foot instructionals. Now we've got slider instructionals. You really don't have to go anywhere else for any baseball information. Then right here with Dan on the Edward Jones Chatting Cage. Just like young Maya, get your webcam fired up. Join us here in the show. Ask your question. If you can't get to it, use Twitter. I'm reading Twitter as fast as I can and keeping up with it. And so I will actually stay with it right now. Robbie double O underscore wants to know, and this goes back to sort of some of the, the stuff you talked about uh, in your All-Star experience. Was it difficult for you to be uh, dropped right into the closer role as a young pitcher? Robbie, yes, it was. Well, I made the Brewer staff in 1986. I made the team as a starting pitcher. I was the fifth starting pitcher, but we had five days off in the month of April, and they didn't want to disrupt the five starting pitchers. So what they did, they wanted to use me in the bullpen, pitching two or three innings at a time. Robbie, unfortunately for me, I pitched really well doing that, and the Brewers, the manager at the time was George Bamberger, and they decided – I really looked like I was taking this relieving thing, and they wanted me to make the switch to making it a full-time reliever. And I will say this. I thank George Bamberger to this day because there's no way I would have pitched for 18 seasons as a starting pitcher. The bullpen was the best move for me. I embraced it. I enjoyed it, and I made it a pretty good career. We have fans lined up to join us here in the Edward Jones Chatting Cage. That's Dan Plesak. This is a new fan. What's your name, where you're from? What's your question for Dan? Hi, I'm Dana from Florida, and my question for you is, what is your favorite candy? Dana, what is my favorite candy? That's a pretty good question. It depends on, actually, to give you the best answer, my favorite candy is whatever is in front of me. Throw me a Tootsie Roll, I'll eat it. Throw me a Mars bar, I'll eat it. I don't have a favorite candy, I love them all. <laughs> well, we got it all covered, folks. I mean, it's pretty clear at this point. You just fire it up and ask wherever you need to, whether it's via Twitter or your webcam. I will follow up on that. Dan, have you found that your snack habits have changed from being a player to being an analyst? Of, of, of course. Why do you think I'm wearing a double X shirt right now? Right? I wore an extra large when I played. I tell you what, it's a lot diff more difficult when you get out playing. You don't realize all the activity when you're playing. You're, you're, you're burning off a lot of calories, a lot of energy. I watched what I ate when I played, but really since I was done playing baseball, I really have to watch what I eat. I try not to eat past 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. I don't eat as much fruit and vegetables as I should. I'm not a rabbit. I, don't, I like fruit. I don't love fruit. I go to every ballpark, and I'll tell you what I try to do. I go to every ballpark, spring training ballpark, and I'm going to go to the grill, and I'm going to either have a Polish sausage, an Italian sausage, a roast beef, because I am going to enjoy the ballpark, and I'm going to enjoy the ballpark food. I'm not worried about running a marathon. I'm not worried about making the Olympic team for track and field. I want a good boiler and to talk baseball. That's all I want. Man, spring training is a great thing. And those are the three basic food groups. 
Oh, it is. <laughs> Three meat types. Let me tell covered. you something. I'm two and a half. I, I'm two Polish sausages in by the third <laughs> inning today at Salt River Field in, in Arizona. That's the way to do it. You got hey, you got to break in. You got to get season ready. Uh, we got time to go back to Twitter for one more. Uh, this one, we're gonna stay away from the diet. I think we got that well covered, and I'm looking forward to the Polish sausages out there in Arizona. Uh, McKay92 wants to know. Who was the toughest hitter that you had to face? And I want, I want to follow up with that, so it's a two-parter. Who was the toughest hitter you had to face? And right now, who would you not want to face? Mac, I'm going to tell you the two toughest hitters for me, Tony Gwynn and Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds, in my opinion, there's never been a player that had the, bat, the eye not to swing at bad pitches. When he did swing, he did a lot of damage. Barry Bonds, to me, was the best hitter I've seen in the last 45 to 50 years. What guy would I not want to face today? There's a boatload of them. I'm 53 years old. I probably have an 81-mile-an-hour fastball at best. My slider's rolling. There are coaches, first and third base coaches, that would make a living off of me. So the list is too big, but I'd have to say right now, the guy I want no piece of, probably Yasiel Puig. Mm. I don't really have anything to get that guy out with. I don't throw hard enough. The only thing I might be able to do is I throw under hitting speed. That's the key in baseball and the key to pitching. Throw 98 to 100 or throw less than 80? I have the less than 80 corner market. I have that. <laughs> that that market's cornered. I'm 77 to 80. I grunt loud and the ball just doesn't get there. Uh, that's, hey, that's, that's called a changeup right there. If you grunt loud enough like it's 98. That's called a changeup. <laughs> And now I might, I might be able to throw 85 if I have three of those Polish sausage and two large fries to go along with it. I love it. Well, you know what, Dan? Uh, that, that's it, man. How do you, do you feel like you made some? I feel like the contact was good here in the cage. You had a great session. Lots of contact. Listen, I'm, I'm taking some swings in the cage. Next time I'm in the cage, I'm going to two fist with some Polish sausage or Italian sausage in between bites. And I'm going to let you do all the talking. You know what? Uh, I think we got ourselves a show right there. Dan please, like everybody. Thanks for being with us. And I gotcha. want to thank all the fans, as always, for being a part of the Edward Jones Chatting Cage. We'll see you for the next go-round. And who knows what we might find out then. That's right. Swing for the fences in the Chatting Cage. <laughs>